So hi, welcome to the third session of the Learn to Fly Fish FF 101. We've come back home with Jenny and Mike, and we're gonna have a look at uh, tying a couple of knots, two knots specifically, to tie a fly on to your nylon. Uh, Jenny's gonna tie that one, and Mike's gonna learn to tie two pieces of nylon together, really simple knots, really strong knots, and effective to use every day. But just before we do that, a lot of people who attend the Learn to Fly Fish FF 101 classes uh, have a lot of questions about where they can go fishing locally, uh, what fish they can catch, maybe they want to share some stories about stuff and we have a lot of information which we can provide people around that and it's really good to speak to local specialists because they can talk to, to you about your own ambitions and what you want to do and about local waters as well. So here I've just got some examples really we can have a look at. Uh, there's a few flies in the fly box we can have a look at and there's some pictures of fish here. <laughs> so um, uh, there's, there's a picture of a rainbow trout which are commonly stocked across the UK. Um, quite familiar with a lot of people, you can even see them in supermarkets and things. The wild native species is the brown trout with all the spots, very beautiful fish, lovely and it lives in the rivers local to here. And the grayling, uh, which is a beautiful fish, commonly caught through the winter with that lovely um, colour and fin to it as well. And I like to go fishing locally in the waters to me here. In fact, I'm off tomorrow to go and catch some sea bass and mackerel, hopefully. And um, that's uh, that local local waters to me where, where I can where I can fish and, um, easily for these things. So let's have a look at what we can do. So if I was to go fishing, what fish would you say that I would catch? You know. Well, I guess it would depend where you go. Um, if you were to fish on the local river where we are here, where we take the dog for a walk, that's full of brown trout. And um, yeah, you'd, you'd most likely to find that. But if we went down to the beach where we sometimes go, uh, as you know, uh, we're quite often finding bass and mackerel down there and uh, they're really easy to catch and uh, you know so there we go okay right so first of all let's have a look at this so this is a bit of a giant hook which just makes it a bit easier for you to see at home um, and for, for, for us to use for tutorial purposes but really the flies are just much smaller they're more like this size here and where we would tie them on with just thin clear nylon I'm going to use some blue um, old fly line uh, for Jenny to tie on uh, which is a bit easier to see. So first thing to do, Jenny, is to put the end of your nylon through the, the eye of the hook. That's it, okay. perfect, that's it. And then bring it back over. Mm. That's great. Now tie that round about, twist that round about four or five times. And normally six is the kind of goal here, but with this heavier rubber, um, four, four times is more than enough. So now pop okay. it back through the little hole at the top. The eye here or just under the, yeah, yeah, that's right. Not in the eye, just in the natural gap that's, that's caused there. That's perfect. Now, if you could just trap that tag end that you've just popped through the little gap at the top, and we'll do this one more time. That's great. Now, if you just wet this with some okay. of the water there, that's it. And then if you can pull your main line tight, the, the knot should seat up really nicely. Oh, Look wow. at that. That's beautiful. Really nice job. So... We've just uh, switched positions so that Mike sat over the black cloth. It just makes it a lot easier to see. Um, Mike, just to remind you, is going to tie together uh, essentially two bits of nylon, which I've replaced with some rubberized fly lines so that we can um, to see it a little bit better. Okay, Mike, so if you just grab, um, grab those two bits, one in each hand perhaps. Now, if this is your main line, we called it in the last one, and that's gonna go back to your fly line, rod and reel and everything else. And yeah. this is the piece you're introducing on. Um, and then if you just overlap them together so that they're, they're like that, that's it. And overlap them a good seven, eight, nine inches. So you've got plenty of room, that's it. Now, just using the water that I uh, gave you there, if you just wet them a little bit, it helps them just stick together and bind together and try and actually have them so that they're, they're touching each other. They're like that, that's lovely. Now, the first thing to do is just to make an overhand loop. That's it, and then just catch that with your thumb, pinch it, that's it. Perfect, very nice, it's great. Now, past that tag end, through that's it at twice so you're going to pass the tag end through twice so that's through once and through twice if you look at that that should just be a, a pretty simple loop that's it perfect now grabbing all four bits just pull them together at the same rate that's it and then just wet them again with a little drop of water and then tighten that all up perfect and that is a, a really nice 
not. Now you've got two tag ends there and you can see with the equipment I'm using here, this is all the equipment one would need in an everyday trip. Um, the most useful thing here is a pair of snips um, and this is just a range of different nylons that I would, I would carry with me. Um, so using the snips, I'm just gonna, you could take that end, Mike. Yeah. I'm just gonna clip the end off. Now there, I'm gonna leave a little tag at the end, just out of security. Give the knot a little bit of insurance. And then I'm gonna do that one. And then there's the actual knot tied. Very good, Mike. Nice knot. Yeah. So Jennifer, have you been tying any more? Oh, you did, you tied another one of those. I did. Oh, well, that's nice. Again, a nice little round uh, series of stacks like that's what you're after. Really strong, that's great. Well, and while we were doing that, I think Jennifer's been following the steps. Oh, very nice. And she's tied two bits together as well. So really nice job. So finally, before we finish, we're gonna have a look at a few flies. Often the root of many questions which people have. <laughs> Pepper's excited at the idea of flies, he chases them. <laughs> so um, here in my fly box, I've got some beetle patterns, um, some rather spurious foam pieces here. <laughs> and commonly people recognize the daddy long legs, but what's gonna be of more use will be the uh, pictures I've got here for you to show you. So here I've got some, some pictures showing the natural and the, the tied fly which people use. Um, this is quite an unusual little critter which is found commonly in rivers up and down the country, a cased caddis, making its little body case out of the gravel and shells and bits and bobs um, that it lives in on the, on the river bed. And the corresponding fly that's tied here, um, slightly harder to perhaps see, but there's the insect kind of coming out the top with the cased, um, they're coming back. But a much easier example is the mayfly. So right now we're celebrating the mayfly as it's coming up on the rivers uh, across the country. This is one of the most sort of common kind of forms of the mayfly that we'll see with its distinctive body, tail, wing, and thorax. And that's replicated with uh, an example here of a fly tied with the wing, the body, and the tail. And these little feathers, which are turned onto the hook here, they act as like little legs. So just like when this fly sits on the water, it makes little imprints, little dints on the water in the meniscus of the water. These little feathers will make the similar impressions on the water. And many people believe that it's those impressions on the surface of the water, together with the silhouette of this on the surface, that the fish recognises as food as it comes over. So that's a real nice example of the mayfly, which we're seeing all around us. So next time you're out having a walk on the river over the next couple of weeks, you can have a look out for that. And here are some other examples, which you'll see um, in the evenings and all through the summer. Um, you'll see caddis and sedge and stonefly with the wings down instead of up and a corresponding fly tied there that's uh, available. And a really lifelike example a very common little shrimp. These are only the size of your little fingernail and um, they're abound in the bottoms of any rivers up and down the country and a commonly tied pattern there um, with some natural kind of fur and fibre um, tucked out at the bottom and with some ribbing across the case there to give it a really lifelike look. So common flies that you'd see in most anglers fly boxes. Um, now Jenny you'll be able to tie any of these on would. Yeah, so we can, hopefully just that gives you an idea of how simple and straightforward a lot of this can be. Um, tomorrow we're looking forward to a fishing trip. We're going to go down to the coast and we're going to fish with some little bait patterns and uh, hopefully catch a mackerel or a sea bass. So looking forward to a trip out. Can't wait. Already. Sorry. So thanks a lot folks. Thanks for your time. Take care.